Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at reasons for accounting diversity. And specifically, it's going to be one reason rather than reasons. And that reason will be cultural factors. We looked at other five reasons in the prior session. And I'm going to only look at the cultural factor. I believe the cultural factors are important. That's why I want to emphasize them in one separate recording. This topic is usually covered in an international accounting course. I'm not really sure how much it's covered on the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you, that's you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should create one. It's very important for your professional image and networking ability. YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. I have over 1,500 accounting lectures on YouTube. Please like them, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them. If you're, benefit, if you're benefiting, it means other people might benefit as well. This is my Instagram account. I'm trying to grow my Instagram account, and this is my Facebook page. I also have a Gumroad account where I have premium CPA material, and you could also access my website. Now in this session, we're gonna be looking specifically for one reason for, uh, div for accounting diversity, and that reason is the cultural factor, cultural factor. We looked at legal system, basis of taxation, providers of financing, inflation, and political ties in the prior session. I'm gonna be focusing on this session separately. Now we have to understand that the culture sh shapes the way we think, sh culture shapes the way we do business, culture shapes the way we communicate, and different cultures or different countries have different cultures, or sometimes there's many cultures within the same country. Understanding the cultural dimension will help you understand how accounting rules are set up. So no, I'm not saying one culture is better than the other. Each culture is different. So just wanna let you know that understanding those cultures will help you understand how to communicate with other with other people and that's the purpose of it and and the way you the way you are raised in in a, in in a certain culture will influence the way you do accounting so the sixth culture the sixth reason for accounting diversity is national cultures and national is not really i don't like the word national i just i think it's uh, it's exclusive because within within some nations there are many cultures so just although it's i'm gonna call it national cultures just don't get hung on it where well i'm a nation i'm a nation i'm a national of this country well that's not really my culture again within each country or with each with each geographical area you have many many cultures and to address this cultural aspect we're going to look at hofstad's cultural dimension okay which is a uh, Hofstadt cultural dimension theory is a framework for cross-cultural communication developed by this psychologist, Gerd Hofstede. He's a Dutch psychologist. He classified countries into 10 different cultural areas. Again, you might have more, but he, he did it that way. Hofstede is a Dutch social sociologist. He's a former IBM employee and a professor of organizational anthropology and international management at Maastricht University of, in the Netherlands. He's a well known for his research. What he did, he, when he was working at IBM, he collected this, uh, he collected data from the employees across the globe at IBM and cre created this five cultural dimension. And if you study international management, you might learn about them. Sometimes there are four of them. Sometimes they say it's five, but definitely there are four. The first dimension is individual versus collectivism. And what does it mean individual versus collectivism? Basically, it's a preference for loose or tight social fabric. Simply put, this dimension focuses on the question about where people, whether people prefer a close-knit network or people prefer to basically be by themselves, be individual, be individualistic, and fend, fend for themselves. Now I can tell you, for example, the US versus Japan, okay? The US society is, is to, to a great degree, it's considered, in quote, aggressive society. Uh, they thrive on success, they thrive on competition, they thrive on individualism. Jap Japan, on the other side, they prefer collectivism. For example, in the US, we use a lot of A, I, I, I. In Japan, they use we as a company, as a society, as a country. The US is more individualism versus collectivism. Nothing wrong with either or, it's just this is, this is, just so you understand uh, this cultural, this cultural dimension. Another cultural dimension is power distance. What is a power distance? It's the extent of hierarchy accepted 
or is it an egalitarian value are embraced in the organizations or institution? Basically, it's the degree in which the less powerful member of a society accept and expect that power be distributed unequally. For example, I'll give you maybe an extreme example it will be South Korea. In South Korea, if you are a manager, if you are a president, if you are a captain, like an airline captain, you are regarded very high and there's a power distance between you and your, and the people that work underneath you. So there's this power distance. And the people underneath you accept that power distance. A case in point about the power distance, one time there was a South Korean flight. I don't remember the flight number, but there was a, a, a crash, a South Korean crash. And what they did, they you know, every time there's an airplane crash, they study what, what happened in the uh, in the cockpit, in the in the cockpit of the airplane and from the black box. And what they did when they studied the communication in that black box, what they find out is the engineers who were on the plane, the engineers and the co-pilot, they were warning the pilot indirectly that something is not right. But they could not come out and communicate that that information more forcefully. Why? Because that power distance. They kind of doubted themselves that since you know I'm an engineer, I'm a co-pilot. You know the captain, the pilot knows better. So they did, they tried to communicate this information about the weather, but they did not do it forcefully. And that's what the black box shows. Okay. Versus in Sweden, in Sweden. Basically, the power distance is very low. They, you know, the managers and the employee, the prime minister and the regular citizen, they're very close in a sense that there is no power distance in between. Okay, this is basically, again, a cultural dimension. The third cult cultural dimension is uncertainty avoidance. And uncertainty avoidance basically um, state how uncomfortable are you with uncertainty and ambiguity. In some countries, people, generally speaking, are very comfortable with uncertainty and amb ambiguity. In other cultures, they are not. So we have to understand. For example, the U.S., the U.S., um, w uncertainty and avoidance, we embrace uncertainty and avoidance. Okay? In Japan, the Japanese culture, they are a little bit less, uh, they, 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 they don't, they don't, they don't embrace uncertainty avoidance. And, just because you embrace uncertainty and avoid this, this is why you have many entrepreneurs in the U.S. This is why you have companies like Facebook, Google. People take chances. Now, you're not going to succeed every time, but the point is the culture encourages this risk-taking. So uncertainty avoidance is not... Uh, if you take if you take a chance, you are not being ashamed. Actually, um, you are considered a hero because you took a chance. In other countries, if you took a chance and you failed, you know, the society may shame you. So uncertainty and avoidance is another one of those cu important cultural dimensions that Hofstede talk about. Okay. The fourth one is masculinity. Now, masculinity doesn't mean man versus woman. It just basically it's uh, do you do you do you do you do you value performance, achievement, heroism versus caring and nurturing. This is what this is what uh, masculin masculinity is. It's a preference. You have a preference for achievement, heroism, assertiveness, material reward for success. And in the U.S., we are a masculine society uh, to a great degree. Or do you prefer cooperation? Do you prefer modesty? Do you prefer caring for the weak? Do you prefer for the quality of life? Like in Japan, they more care about the quality of life. Okay. Uh, in the U.S., not as much in terms of of, of work environment. It's basically a byproduct, but not a main, um, the main dish. Okay. The fifth dimension is long-term orientation. Basically, uh, this this came about later on. Basically, what is your focus? Uh, is your focus short-term orientation, or do you look at the long-term perseverance and thrift? Certain societies deals with right now, I want the profit right now, like in the US, we want the profit now. And this is why we report on a quarterly basis. This is why we watch Wall Street. This is why stocks go up and down very quickly because we are short term oriented. In other, in other societies, they look at the long term, the long term effect. So understanding those, cult those cultural dimension um, would help you understand that different countries have different cultures and your culture would influence the way your accounting system or your accounting setup, uh, your accounting organization set up the rules based on the cultural dimension because you are what your culture is. Along with Hofstede cultural dimension, we're going to look at uh, Sidney John Gary. Sidney John Gary is actually an English professor of international business at the University of Sydney Business School. He, he identified four widely recognized 
accounting values. So rather than looking at accounting values, then we're going to combine the accounting values with half studies cultural dimension that can be used uh, that can that can be used to define a country's accounting subculture. So what he did, he did, he he kind of identified from the literature four widely recognized accounting values. And by, by the way, he was the president of the International Accounting Asso Association. Okay. So the first the first accounting value is professionalism versus statutory control. And basically, what is this? What is this value? It's the preference for professional judgment versus prescribed legal requirement. For example, in the U.S. the to a great degree, the accounting profession is self-regulated. Self-regulated means the accounting profession regulates itself. Now, the reason I said to a great degree <laughs> is because up until the 2002, when Sarbanes-Oxley, when Sarbanes-Oxley occurred, when when we had a fraud Enron, WordCom, and Sarbanes-Oxley was uh, was enacted by Congress, to a great degree. We will self-regulate it. The accounting profession and the auditing profession was self-regulated. Then comes Sarbanes-Oxley and they created the PCAOB, the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, which is a government organization that started to oversee the, the, the auditing profession. Yes, the SEC does play a role, but, but to a great degree, the, the, the profession is self-regulated. In other countries, it's more prescriptive legal requirements. So what they do, they look at laws in order to uh, to know the rules for the accounting. Okay, so it's drafted by laws. And we talked a little bit about this in the legal system in the prior session. Another accounting value is uniformity versus flexibility. And what is uniformity versus flexibility? Uniform, uniformity accounting pra practices between companies. So are using the same accounting practices between companies versus flexibility between companies. And over time, vis-a-vis -vis flexibility and according with per perceived circumstances of individual companies. So simply put, do you prefer that all companies use the same accounting practices or are you going to allow flexibility for companies? So if the company have a different circumstances, you allow the company to record, to, to recognize, to measure the transaction differently. Certain, in, in certain, certain countries or certain uh, culture, they prefer uniformity. This way it's easy, it's all the same, we don't have to worry about it. I'm going to tell you, in the U.S. we have more flexibility. Okay, The way you book a transaction might be a little bit different depending on your industry, depending on the circumstances. So some accounting, in some countries they value uniformity, and some they value flexibility. Conservatism, conservatism versus optimism. What is our views of business? Are we do we take cautious approach or are we risk taking? Are we more optimistic or are we less are we less optimistic or more careful? We take a cautious approach. And depending how we look at business, we set our accounting rules. So certain countries are more cautious. Again, I, I always mention the U.S. because I'm most familiar with the U.S. In the U.S. We are more kind of toward the risk taking, although we have the concept of conservatism, but our conservatism is still less conserv less conservative, relatively speaking, to other countries. Um, secrecy versus transparency. Do we value secrecy or do we value transparency? Um, for example, in the U.S., as I mentioned earlier, because the shareholders are public shareholders, we value transparency. We want more disclosure. In other countries, they value secrecy. For example, in Latin America and Mexico, Colombia, they 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 like secrecy. In Japan, in Germany, they prefer secrecy. Okay, so it's the preference for confidentiality or restriction of disclosure, like in some Asian countries or Latin America, versus transparency and openness, like in the U.S. and the U.K. So those are the four accounting values. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to look at the accounting values in conjunction with Hofstede cultural dimension. Okay, and what we will see is this. For example, let's take, uh, since we're talking about conservatism, let's look at conservatism. What we will see, we will see that conservatism is a positively link to uncertainty avoidance and is a positively link to long-term orientation. And hopefully this makes sense. When you are a conservative, and if your nature is conservative, if your cultural dimension is conservative, you are going to avoid uncertainty. You're going to have strong um, a tendency toward uncertainty avoidance because your nature is conservative. Also, you're going to have you're going to have a more uh, orient long term orientation. You're looking at the long term. You're lo you're not looking for quick results. And the opposite is true. If you are less conservative, if you are if you're if if you are less conservative generally, you're going to be negative on the uncertainty avoidance. You don't care about uncertainty and avoidance. 
okay and also you're gonna have rather than long-term orientation you will have short-term orientation short-term orientation okay um, let's look at another one for example um, if you if it's if if you value if your accounting values are professionalism you're gonna be high on individualism and high on masculinity why because as an individual you are self-regulated you self-regulate yourself you don't want somebody to tell you what to do it's individualism you don't want an organization you don't want the legal system you want to uh, you want to use your own judgment and also you you'll be high on masculinity again you'll be negative you'll be negative on long-term orientation why because if you have high professionalism most probably you're looking for short term you are looking most likely for short term for short term results I would look at secrecy as well we notice that if you are if you are if your accounting value if your accounting values are of secrecy okay you are positive on power distance why because power distance preserve the secrecy okay so if you're up high I know you don't need to know because you're down below so there's a power distance so secrecy will be high also uncertainty avoidance and certainty avoidance you don't want we don't want any ambiguity we want everything to be clear in a sense that there are certain things you need to know and others you don't know so we want to preserve that secrecy okay also you'll be high on long-term orientation you're looking for the long term you're not looking for the short term okay and as a result if you have any information you might keep it to use it later on you're preserving your secrecy okay and you could take a look at uniformity um, just FYI okay so those are basically the cultural dimension of half study in conjunction with the accounting values now many studies were were conducted it doesn't mean this is this is not a scientific uh, method this is just basically to give you an idea so if you are dealing with an international situation you have an idea how different culture um, how different culture value different values basically and here this is another uh, this is another uh, uh, ranking for example the Anglo countries who are the Anglo countries the US the UK English speaking countries Canada New Zealand Australia they are low in secrecy and low on conservatism there's a there's a relationship if you are low on secrecy you are low on conservatism okay you're you know you, you don't you don't value secrecy and conservatism you're low on conservatism versus if we're gonna go to the other extreme less developed Latin countries they're high on secrecy and they are more conservative they are more conservative here we're talking company uh, countries like Colombia Mexico um, then there's some in between for example Japan they're high on secrecy but not as high as Latin America and high on conservatism okay so Nordic countries Sweden Norway they're low on secrecy and low on conservatism again those just the reason you, you are learning this or the reason you are being exposed to this just so you know that there are different factors that affect accounting the fact how we book transaction and cultural dimension play an important role in how accounting accounting rules are created how accounting organization what what do they value well they're gonna value their culture and whatever their culture is it's gonna factor into their institutions into their accounting institution in that factor it's gonna flow down into the way they do accounting hopefully you would appreciate the cultural factor um, make sure if you have the book read the book read the textbook if you have any questions any comments please let me know if you happen to visit my website for additional lectures please consider donating if you're studying for your CPA exam as always study hard it's worth it